Hello gentlemen, uh, I'm back. My name is Hassan from Chrono Studios uh, and today I'm going to show you uh, a couple of um, post rendering techniques which you can uh, use to you know, achieve a little bit more realism in your renderings. Uh, I'm going to compare these two renderings now. Uh, this is the original rendering, this is the raw render, right? And uh, this is the post rendered image you know you, you, you can see both of them uh, there's not so much difference but of course one looked like uh, it's been worked upon more than the other now this is raw image this is the post rendered image so uh, let's start by launching uh, Adobe After Effects uh, and this is uh, your real canvas if you're conversant with uh, Adobe After Effects interface you know that uh, this is where you have your work files this is where you have your composition scene and this is where you have your timeline and then this is where you have your layers and elements so uh, I'm just going to make this very basic so that uh, everyone can understand this so the first thing I do when I'm in After Effects is, uh, okay let me show you the render passes that I exported you know I have the global illumination the GI the V-Ray lighting raw global illumination, raw lighting, raw total lighting, raw uh, refraction, refraction, V-ray shadows, total lighting, and Z-depth. This is um, if I want to do uh, li li like a depth of field. I'm still going to do a tutorial on that, so uh, let's keep going. So the first thing I do here is uh, I come in and I say import multiple files, or otherwise I use control or high, uh, and then I select uh, the render passes. That, that I want to work with and in this case uh, my render passes will start from here and I'm selecting all uh, I think 11 of them or thereabouts so I say open and then I'm done then uh, now I change my project settings to 16 bits per channel I say ok um, now uh, in order to you know start off my canvas I just drag and drop my elements right into here and my duration is one second because this time around I'm not doing an animation what I'm doing is um, a still shot so it's a single composition with one second of time frame so I say ok and it imports all my files right uh, now usually it, it places them above each other that's normal way after effect works so the first thing I do is uh, I drag I drag my RGB down a little, uh, just one step above my Z depth because this is what I'm going to use for my depth of field then I uh, select all my other passes I right click it's uh, very simple I come on the blending mode I choose uh, my soft light and then for my transform I choose opacity and I make it 20 so when I make uh, my opacity 20 it, it, it just makes all these images above my RGB you know a little bit uh, transparent okay now that's uh, that's that's, uh, that's that's what you can see there that's the image but it looks a little bit dark right and now uh, because I used um, because I use a linear workflow in my 3ds max I like to put my gamma back to 2.2 which uh, I just have to come to layer and create a new layer and uh, give it an adjustment layer now I drag and drop my adjustment layer right on top of my RGB uh, I right click on it and then I give it uh, an effect a color correction effect which is the exposure and then I make this 2.2 you know it, it automatically corrects my brightness and it propagates it right 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 inside my scene it blends it with the, with the uh, object in my scene and, and uh, I think the results the result is not bad right the result is not bad now the next thing I do is uh, I want to create a depth of field because uh, okay th this is what I'm trying to replicate I want you to see uh, an eventual image that looks something like this okay so uh, this is this is what I do. I right click on my uh, RGB file and I come to effect. Uh, the first thing I come to is um, uh, blow and sharpen, and I use uh, camera lens blow. Now in your camera lens blow, you can select your Z depth pass for it to be, you know, for it to be the the Z the pass you're going to use for your Z depth. So if you, if you invert it, you can. Uh, Okay, you can invert your blow map so that you have the object in the foreground to be sharper and then the background to be blurred or you make it the object in the foreground to be blurred and the background to be sharper. So you can you can modify you can modify your settings to have uh, so that your, your renderings can look 
you know like a uh, real camera you're giving it your real camera effect but in this time this time around i may just as well delete my camera lens blow because really i'm not sure i want to use it for this part uh i think uh, I, I want to use the camera lens blow for an image that looks like this or an image that looks like this so i'm gonna do a tutorial about that so uh, just be on standby now uh what while i'm done with uh my most of my adjustments uh i just want to enhance my image a little bit and i come to effect so uh, now you what, what you can do is uh, on that effect you come to magic black looks and you open your looks you create your looks uh, addition select edit and then you have your raw image back now uh most of the time i don't do too much image enhancement because i try to enhance my images right from studio max when i'm rendering so uh i may want to add some little effects uh, like on that vignetting you know to just uh, create uh, some, some kind of effect here you know to give your image some little dark edges you can you can check here and you can turn here on and off to be able to see the results in your window uh, now another thing I do usually is uh, I had the uh, probably had a diffusion to make it uh, a little bit soft uh, I, I turn I turn this I turn this down a bit so that it doesn't get uh, a little bit too much and uh, on a subject I think uh, I use my curves and I, you know I just give it some some very some some little tweak to make it to make it into uh, what I want so basically that's that's all about using magic bullet looks it enhances your image quickly and uh, you can achieve a whole lot of I mean you can you can batch render all most of your images very very quickly and you can turn off just in case you don't like the outcome you can turn off your effects before you export now to export your image you know you come to a file and you say export and say hard to render queue so many times I use a PNG so uh, this is what I do uh, okay uh, just change this uh, to PNG sequence okay right and I tell it where I want to export it to you know and uh, that's it and I just say okay let's say I'm rendering out to my desktop now I say save and I say render so uh, it takes uh, I think yeah a couple of seconds one two seconds and then I can open my desktop and uh, look for it that's that's my image but because i turn this off this is what i get so if i need to re-export it i just need to add it to render queue again uh, export had to render queue because i've rendered this so it's inactive and then i change this again back to png sequence so that i can have my iris and then I render so it takes one two seconds and I think it overrides what I have here voila that's it so that's uh, how to post render in After Effects and uh, magic uh, magic look so really it's it's not uh, it's not a whole lot of hassle you can you can turn off all your effect here if you want to see how it looks and uh, there are actually some other effects that you can you know you know you can use to enhance your scene and well i'll leave uh, i'll leave you to explore most of these options so uh, thank you very much and uh, hope to see you again sometime